Hey guys, this is going to be my latest Star Trek Discovery review. This is going to be of Season 3, Episode 11, and the episode is called Sin Sinkari. And the basic plot of this episode is that the crew of Discovery get contact from the planet of where the burn has taken place, and they, they, they heard from that that original um, survivor of the burn um, who of course is you know it was a video message and basically they they find out that then there's a there's a survivor there's another survivor of the burn someone still down on the planet and um, they decide to go and explore that they they find out then it's the Sun of the original um well the original um being who they got the message from um it's obviously a kelpian being the the same as um saru and so they learn that it's it's her son who's who's the survivor and they feel they have to go down and, and protect him or find out exactly what's happened and and to try and save him essentially so so they go down saru obviously goes because he's a kelpie and he talks the admiral into letting him letting him go and the admiral says that hey you know don't worry about things here if anything important comes up we can deal with it so Saru goes, the the um, Doctor Who goes, and also Michael goes, because of course she does. But she goes once again, and there's some discussion over her justification, and basically her reasoning is that she says, because Saru is close to this personally, because it's his, his sort of life forms, his, his like race, can he be trusted like will is he too personally involved if a t if a tough decision has to be made about you know the fact that because of the radiation and and the situation down on the planet when push comes to shove they they might have to make a tough decision and they might have to leave the um the, the um survivor down there it might be best for everyone so basically saru michael and who all go down to this planet they're all basically putting their lives in danger because of the radiation that they, they keep selling that throughout the episode to kind of just how dangerous it is and, and how dangerous it could get if they spend too much time on the planet um so what what ends up happening is that they they go down and they sort of get stuck in this sort of time type like this in between sort of dimension that feels almost very virtual reality it feels like they're in like almost like a game or another sort of realm because they're sort of dressed up in in different outfits and they're not exactly sure what's happening they're not sure if what what they've landed on into the planet i notice michael's outfit is very much almost like a red riding hood style get up so i wondered if that was some sort of like you know kind of metaphor some sort of significance and saru actually he's the big one in this because he actually appears as a human being we see him in human form and of course that's basically just Doug Jones the, the actor he actually gets to show, show off his real face so there you have it a nice bit of novelty moment for Doug Jones that has Saru the human version <clears throat> but what soon becomes apparent is that um, the um, the Suki who's the survivor he's essentially scared of something and there's you know kind of some sort of creature and an entity on the planet who appears to be going after him um and so the crew have to try and 
talk him round, try and protect him and kind of say, you know, nothing to worry about and try to find out exactly what it is and what's been scaring him. Because obviously they're, survi- they're surprised at this thing because it's like, hey, yeah, it's supposed to be just him down there. And you get a very gothic sort of setup on, on, on this thing. Um, and ultimately what, what we find out, which is, is very interesting, is that they have been, it, that they're all part of a computer program so to speak um and and that's why they don't appear to have like landed on the planet as explained but we we by the end of the episode we find out then that's something which they've they've put um they've set up on the planet um to to basically protect him almost protect the survivor until help can get there um and and it's a strong character episode for saru because he starts finding out more about his own race and and the history at one point they they meet like the oldest like kelpian that there is and he kind of fills them in a bit more on the background um and michael is kind of doing her best to to get to the um sokai and talk him around um, so obviously a lot of the episode is is set on the planet meanwhile or in this like virtual like computer type game so it's almost like a puzzle the, the characters have to solve it's it's quite quite cool that way meanwhile back on the ship um it's over to tilly she's been left in control as as acting number two um and I, I do like this. I like this stuff with Tilly. I think it's really cool. I think it, it's been a really good character sort of stuff for her. And, and it is something they've been building all season. Um, you, you can argue the uh, the logistics of is she really right for the role as in her sort of like job before this and that. But I think... Saru putting this faith in her and Tilly just as a character kind of growing into more of a, you know, a more sort of authority, but also just, yeah, just facing up to things and kind of being more of a leader. I think that has been something they've been sort of playing with and developing over the season. So because of that, I think when when we get to this when she's left in charge of the ship and she's of course presented with some big challenges because at one point um the the emerald train leader um what's her name if i can find it um well anyway she yeah she oh sarah she shows up and there's some really good set twos between her and Tilly, actually. And, and again, it, it sort of goes to the character stuff because um, Acela's... I like the actress. I think she, she does a really good job. And um, there's some some fun sort of like villainly dialogue and exchanges back and forth with, with Tilly. And at one point, she like sort of tries to cut Tilly down to size because she she basically says you know you're the sort of person who who talks yourself into believing that you're a captain you're a leader um but in reality you you know deep down inside that you you just don't have what it takes and that's what what's um what's he eats you away sort of eats away at you it's basically what she's saying she's monologuing a lot and it's it's a good scene because it's um you know at first you think oh, well maybe she obviously she's being mean and stuff but maybe she she does have a point and but tilly handles it in like the perfect way because she basically plays the freud card on her and 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 turns it around on her and basically says, well, you know, I think that's just you projecting as a famous, like, Austrian um, psychologist would say. And she totally gets the bear of her in that exchange. But 
Yeah, Alcira against Tilly is, is quite a fun little subplot plot in this feud, but Alcira and her crew are basically trying to take over the ship. Um, and there's another like little bit about Tilithium and um, basically Tilly and the rest of them are trying to prevent um, Asira and co from finding out that Michael and the rest are down on the planet um, and they're trying to sort of block that and they're playing cat and mouth mouse they're trying to call call like play bluff in a way and not not give away that that they've got allies down there on the planet and um, obviously trying to protect that and at the same time Azira's sort of suspects them they're hiding something so it's this sort of game of cat and mouse which at one point like um book who's obviously concerned about michael goes on the ship and like his ship again which is obviously a smaller ship i didn't understand the whole science of it but he he like tries to to get to the planet in time to try and like save michael and because uh, the clock's basically ticking at this point. Um, so that's kind of the generics of the episode. And again, I, I think it's it's another strong episode. I I enjoyed it a lot. And I, I think it sort of keeps the momentum going from the last two. Um, again, there there is, although obviously now Giorgio has departed i think there is like a reference to her in this episode which was a nice nice little touch you know rather than just forget about her because she's no longer in the show i think to at least have a call back where michael's like remembering a certain sort of tactic which she like used and stuff and it kind of works its way into this plot i, I think that that's that's a, a, a nice little moment um, to, to still sell the effects of what happened in the last episode but I think this this is a, a really good episode because it it kind of sums up the best of this season when this season has worked at its best because it, it, it has felt like they're expanding the universe it has it sort of feels like they are going for something for these kind of different and rich locations and playing with kind of fantasy and sort of the conventions a bit of this show a bit like they did with the Giorgio um double bill but yeah because it's but in this like computer program and the whole puzzle they find out that um or the look of it is just very gothic. It has this sort of horror type, fantasy type feel, which I really like. Um, there's there's a bit of a horror element because of these creatures that are appearing. Um, but yeah, just the way they expand on that and add to the to the the Trek universe, if you like, and these different ideas they're playing with. Because what basically they they find out is that it's all based on fear the um Sirkai is afraid of this thing which in reality doesn't really exist in in a literal sense but he's got this memory which is based on like a story which his mum used to read to him so the creature that then he keeps seeing actually appears in um in that story and that's what's because he's been kind of trapped on this planet all this time then he's he's now just got like this memory just locked in his head and and that's sort of built up and yeah i, I like that idea sort of playing with that fairy tale type logic sort of thing and there's some good visual effects i think with the creature and stuff and a lot of the themes and and the way they have to try and talk him round and bring him round, I think, does, you know, tap into a lot of Star, Star Trek mythology and a lot of what establishes Trek Trek as a show in general as as being you know quite 
quite interesting and um, what it, what it tends to do um, and you know there's a decent amount of like intensity and there's some good stuff as I said on the shit with Tilly and I, I quite like the villain although she's quite comedic in some ways and it's quite pantomime-ish I, I did enjoy it anyway and the stuff back and forth with Tilly but yeah there's some some really good stuff I think it's it's a, another strong episode um, so it's building up to the end of the season quite nicely um, still a couple more so we'll see how it kind of ends up but it does end with like a cliffhanger because um, yeah book is trying to save like Michael trying to get to her and in the end, like he, she, she is saved, but Saru agrees to stay on the planet to, to help um, the the Kelpian, the Serkai, because it's one of his um, race. And also, who decides to stay behind being a doctor? So you have this big cliffhanger where they potentially could die because Michael goes back and says, like, "I'll come back," and um, because. Part of the drama is over the fact that the ship has obviously it, it's basically losing its power. It doesn't have the full capacity, so it's like nigh on impossible for them to to get to the planet and and to to make a landing and with all the radiation and stuff. So yeah, what basically happens is that um, Michael goes beams back up to the ship and says I will be back for you guys and who says well if it's more than a day don't bother coming back because we will be gone so there's kind of that's the cliffhanger and raising stakes there and then also Adira gets involved like she goes down um, because of a crucial I can't remember now to be honest, but a cru cru something that's crucial in, in helping them. So it's it's tr again trying to up the stakes with that. Um, I thought that that was a bit of an add-on we didn't need, but anyway, good stuff, good episode. I like this one a lot as well. And yeah, that's that's episode eleven. So I'll be back soon with episode twelve and getting closer to the finale so thanks for listening to this star trek discovery review and i'll be back with more star trek review soon thanks and goodbye